Thank you very much. Can you all hear me? I think so, yes. All right. Let me see. Hello, everyone. Good day. Bonjour. Buongiorno. Welcome to our presentation about uh, our dream mission, namely a Europa sample return mission. Uh, the goal of this mission is to return a sample from beneath the ice crust of Jupiter's moon Europa. Um, yeah. For those of you that were here this morning, actually, uh, Joseph Aschbacher in his presentation also mentioned that he has an aspiration to do a very similar mission. So perhaps, uh, perhaps my mission today here will be the, the first one to be actually become a reality instead of just a dream. But uh, yeah, first, let me introduce myself. As Bram said, I'm Luca. Um, I'm a PhD at the German Aerospace Center in Bremen, um, and I'm researching the, um, ways to extract water from the moon and Mars for the uh, purpose of ISRU. And my co-author, Francisco Guerrero, he's also a PhD at the Technical University of Munich and also at the startup in Luxembourg called Mana Electric. And his topic is um, extracting oxygen and metals from lunar regolith, so also space research utilization. So about Europa, what do we actually know? Um, well, as many of you know, Europa is a very interesting place because uh, we think there is, or we, we know there is a large amount uh, of H2O. Um, and not only that, we believe that beneath the ice crust, it might be liquid or at least slushy. Um, yeah, soon we will also learn more, thanks to Jews and hopefully also Europa Clipper. And, uh, and from previous missions like uh, Juno, Galileo, and even Hubble, uh, they, they gave us already a lot of information about Europa. Specifically from Jews in Europa, we hope to learn more about any biomarkers there. And for our mission, it's important also the ice crust thickness, and you will see in a minute why. Uh, but first, why Europa? Of course, as I just said, there is liquid water maybe, and that would be one of the three ingredients for life as we know it. Um, not only that, we also have a rocky core there, which gives us the possibility of having carbon and all sorts of other minerals that you also need for life to spring into existence. And lastly, you need an energy source. Now, we don't think that there is any sunlight going through the ice crust uh, to provide energy. But because of the uh, large gravitational effect of Jupiter, we think that there is a lot of geothermal activity going on. And that could, as it does on Earth, provide um, energy for life to uh, be able to exist. Um, right. Another reason we think uh, this could be a great mission, and if you paid attention to my introduction, um, is that because there is H2O, we, uh, we actually have the possibility to do a return mission because we can create our fuel for the return mission in situ. Um, for me, this would be, of course, a very logical thing, but maybe for you it isn't. Um, yes. Lastly, why not simply assess the sample in situ? Well, of course, we would want to bring some instruments to do that, but as we've seen in the past from the Apollo mission and from the Chang'e missions is that the potential for scientific output just yeah, skyrockets when you do a, a return mission. All right. Let's have a look at our mission architecture then. Uh, it might look very familiar because we're also going to Jupiter. Um, and as the previous mission, we also want to do some uh, moon refueling. Hopefully this is possible in the future. Uh, but because we think that maybe we can do it a bit sooner, we still need to rely also on some gravity assists. So after refueling in the moon, we do our first gravity assist to Earth, which brings us in a um, Venus or towards Venus, where we do another gravity assist back to Earth towards Mars, another gravity assist, back to Earth, and then finally we reach the Jovian system and we can land on Europa. Now that we're finally there, um, hopefully by then, JUICE or uh, the NASA Clipper mission has told us where the ice crust is the thinnest. That will be our landing site. Then our lander, uh, our Europa lander lands on the surface. It deploys the ISRU refueling station and, um, and we can start with a melting probe to go through the ice hopefully create our own nice little geyser there. Uh, once it's finally through the crust, we deploy a small submarine that can then autonomously collect uh, perhaps multiple sensors. We want to have the capability of refueling it, either uh, with a battery or also by using hydrogen oxygen. Once we have our sample, we want the submarine to return it to the um, melting probe, which can then retract through a tether to the, um, well, to the lander which will then hopefully be refueled and become an ascender, leaving behind any systems we don't need for the way back. Now, for the way back, um, we thought mm, maybe it's not good to bring it back to the surface of Earth immediately. We first put it into 
an Earth orbit. Uh, the reason for that is, as maybe you've already thought, it's planetary protection. And in our mission, we both have forward and backwards contamination. Um, right, so then we need to first put it in an orbit around Earth. And this is also another reason why ISRU could shine, because that would require us, or if we want to do it without atmospheric reentry, without aerobraking, uh, we need extra fuel for that. And if we have the ISRU capabilities on Europa, fuel uh, becomes much less of an issue in this equation. Um, another thing that would uh, be enabled by having this sample return in orbit first is that we can maybe have a liquid or an ice sample uh, actually survive the trip. But about surviving the trip, the mission duration, of course, will be very long. And uh, how do we protect our, our sample from the radiation that is in deep space? Um, that's a very hard question. I don't have an answer. But then, once again, I'm going to say ISRU might be able to provide us for a way to at least shorten the trip by having extra fuel, having extra delta V. Right. Um, so what do we need to actually make this a reality? Well, a whole bunch. Uh, and uh, I'm not claiming that this list is conclusive or anything. But yeah, first we need very durable and reusable rocket engines. We need reputable fuel storage tanks. We would need a lot of radiation protection. Uh, we would need a very good power supply, probably nuclear. And then for this specific mission, we need a very good tether and our submarine. The infrastructure that we also need is heavy lifting capabilities. The thing that we want to send from Earth is already quite heavy. We would need in-orbit servicing and refueling on the moon or asteroids, perhaps. Um, yeah, ISRE from the moon. And ah, I forgot to mention this, maybe. But um, once we have our sample in Earth orbit, there could be space stations there that can actually receive the sample first before we decide to do anything with it uh, for the issue of containing and, um, and to keep it alive. If we would have all this nice technologies and infrastructure ever, there is, uh, I think, a million other missions you can come up with. And our Europa sample return mission is just only one of these. And uh, in this slide, I just want to visualize a little bit that you know there will be many paths we can take. And as an engineer, I could come up with a million other missions as well. Right. And uh, about the dates there, don't worry. They are uh, just uh, you know, an idea. We can also do it sooner. For me, that's completely fine. And with that, I think I already uh, reached actually my last slide. Um, I would like to remind you that this was an SGSA Dream mission, and I would like to thank them very much for the opportunity to come here and present. Uh, the idea behind this was, uh, you know, the vision that Francisco and I had is that if we, you know, go have a sample that is returned from Europa, we find life there, that this would be, you know, the drive for a new dawn of a golden age for space exploration, one that hopefully we can all enjoy and also the future generation. Thank you very much for your attention, everyone.